Hello, uh, Starkblade here again. Um, it's another tutorial from the, the Batman miniature game. This one is uh, John Constantine. We'll be doing this one from start to finish, so uh, yeah, let's get started. I decided to start with the overcoat. So these are the colours that I'm going to be using. We'll start off with the XV88 and then we'll highlight up from there. Okay, so I've watered it down, um, I think I'm about one drop of paint to one drop of water, near as damn it anyway. And uh, as Duncan says, two thin coats is the way to go. See, it's still going on quite a peg, so it's pretty good. Um, I think we're going to get away with just the two. I'm using a size 1, Windsor and Noon. And the back. So we'll come back on it. I've uh, done the second coat and it's dry. Okay, so the first stage is dry. Now we're going in with a 50-50 mix of the Baylor Brown or Balor Brown, whatever it is, and the XV88. So it's a 50-50 mix. And I'm just staying up on the raised areas of the coat. The same again, it'll probably take about two coats. make that much of a difference yet but once the second coat goes on it should you should see a nice little transition to it just picking out the raised areas now creases and folds. Okay, alright, we'll come back when that's dry. Okay, so I'm going in with another coat of the 50-50 mix, but I've, I've watered it down just a little bit more. And I'll just go over the, the raised areas once again. And to spin it that way so I can get to it. I've done is just a line across the top of the shoulder now I've got a wet brush and I'm just pushing pushing it out of the folds so it keeps the uh, the darker tone in the folded part and let's go over it again now Same here. I'm 
just stick into the contours of the coat. Alright, so that's my brush wet, just water, and I'm just pushing it up a bit just to feather it off. Okay, so we'll come back when that's dry. Okay, so now I'm using the Balor, Balor Brown. Um, I've picked out some of the bits in the front. I'm going to do the same at the back now. Um, we're back to about 50-50 consistency with the paint and water. Just remember I thinned previous coat down a bit. But we're back to the original mix. It's a pretty good um, consistency to try. You know, some days you get it spot on, and other days you have to work at it, but it's a good rule of thumb. As see, I'm just sticking to the raised areas now. I'll get a point back on my brush in there. We'll come back on that dry. Okay, so this should be the final stage. I've just added some uh, Ushabti bone to the mix, just to lighten it up a bit. And I'm going in quite thin with this one. So it's just to concentrate down the bottom here and on just on the, the most prominent creases. trying to get it as thin a point on my brush as I can. Um, you can take about two or three passes at this just to build it up slowly. Well, that'll do for the first one. Okay, so I'm going to do one more coat with the, uh, the added bleach bone. It's starting to come up quite nicely now. I'm, I'm just thinking that some of the, the deeper recesses I might go in with a, a dark brown especially around the front of the jacket. I haven't really been showing you much of that but it's exactly the same process. I just mean just push Push the contrast just a little bit more. Okay. Okay, so this time I've got XV88 and I've added a little bit of um, Vallejo's Armour Brown or Tank Brown, it used to be called. It's quite a nice dark brown, but I've mixed it about 50 50 ish and it's really really thin and I'm just sticking to deepest creases and folds that might be easier to show you at the front but that'll give it you know I'll pop it a little bit more and I think we'll go on to the final highlight now So nearly there with the coat. Um, I'm going back to that dark tone that I made with the 
XV88 and the Armour Brown and um, I haven't really touched the inside of the coat so all I'm going to do is use that dark brown just to go into the folds just to bring the tone down a bit and same again I think that I'll take about two coats for that and this crease here I'm not happy with so I'm going to add a little bit in there too and I'll feather that out with a bit of water right so that's the coat done um, I think I'll do the trousers next Okay, for the trousers, um, I've decided to go for slight, something slightly different to the, the average grey. Um, those of you that know my uh, Batman stuff will have seen these colours used on the uh, Court of Owls crew. Um, they give a lovely finish, so uh, yeah, we'll crack on with that. The first coat is going to be staggered on scale green. Okay, so the same again, it's... Uh, it's probably about one measure of paint to one measure of water. I'm going to try and keep it neat and not go over the belt. Because it saves, saves going over it again later. Just finishing off the rear on the first coat. Okay, we'll leave that dry and we'll come back. Okay, so the next stage is a 50-50 mix of these two. Um, gives a nice tone to go over the top of the, uh, the scale green. I've added a little bit of water to it. Concentrate on the foldy bits and the insides of the trousers. Okay, so what I've, uh, while it's drying, um, I've finished. Well, I've finished off the other side of the tie only because I can get to it on camera. Um, what I'm going to do is just gonna use the wash again, but I'm going in on the, the deeper folds and creases on the insides of the legs. Don't have to be too careful because um, you're going to go over it with highlights anyway. And we'll go in the creases too. Up here. And we'll leave that dry. I'm going to go on my usual uh, flesh recipe. Um, I've already done the base coat of the Cadian flesh tone. I'm just about to put another another coat done. <clears throat> this is uh, probably the same again, just 50-50 uh, paint and water. I'm just sticking to the raised areas this time, the forehead, the cheeks the nose, the top lip, let's turn them on to this side, so the forehead, cheek, jawbone, um, beak. Um, I'll probably go on to a Reichlin flesh shade now for the uh, oh. Reichlin flesh shade now for the skin. So back onto the trousers now. I'm using the Dark Reaper. Um, 
straight away I'm going to try, try and start picking out these folds. This is going to take a couple of coats I can see already. It's, uh... See, I haven't got my consistency just right at all, so I might stop here and just add a little bit more paint to it. I think I've gone with a bit too much water, but that's good to see. Okay, okay hopefully, we're back with a better consistency now. This is good to know that you know you don't get it right every time. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit better. I'm just following down, you know, like we did on the the coat earlier. I'm just following the creases. I'll just do the one side of the leg for now. deliberately keep away from the shadows on this side because it'll be it'll be a lot darker on the inside leg anyway so I'll, I'll just highlight the tops of each fold just using the edge of the brush there pick out that line yeah much better Okay, so I've already highlighted the left side. This is um, the Dark Reaper mixed with Thunderhawk blue, so that's a bit about a 50 50 mix. And again, I'm just concentrating on the raised, raised bits. It's an odd sculpt because there's no folds on this side of it, so I'm, I'm having to paint them in. So I'm just like an imaginary folds and hoping that they'll come out. Is the Thunder Hawk blue on its own?
think my brush is on the way out because it's not holding a point as well as it used to. So for the final highlight I'm just adding in pastel blue to the Thunderhawk blue. So I'm just going to kick these to the most extreme folds. satin I might have to use some dull coat on this and bring the shine down a bit um, so we'll crack on with the face next as I said uh, there's Cadian flesh tone and the flesh shade I think I'll go back in with a 50-50 mix of the Cadian flesh and Kislev 